national program from London. Now you're going to hear the first performance of the new BBC Dark Orchestra, directed by Henry Hall. It's just a time for dancing. Soon, every living room was echoing to the sound of ballroom. The bands had huge followings. Jack Hilton, for example, in 1929, he travelled over 63,000 miles on tour, he gave over 700 performances, and his records sold at the rate of about seven per minute. So he was hugely successful. Roy Fox led one of the most popular bands of the 30s. Mary Lee was just out of school when she won a competition and joined them as a singer. There was about 20, 25 musicians and Roy Fox, immaculately dressed in beautiful tales, all playing gorgeous music, you know. I, I thought to myself, I've died and gone to heaven. Cause it's been so long Since I held you tight When we said goodnight It's been so long Honey, can't you see what you've done to me? It was really brilliant. And these boys knew what they were doing. You went on and, and you knew you were working for the, the best musicians in the world and you couldn't help but else but be good. It was a happy, happy time. It was so nice. For three golden years, Mary fitted right in with the boys in the band. They were lovely, but then I think I was terribly lucky because the band boys could be, you know, rough and ready and, uh, you know, I won't go any further, but... Uh, I remember Roy Fox telling them, they said, now she's just turned 14, I don't want any swearing, I don't want any untoward gags or what have you, leave her be, let her grow up alongside you and don't tell her any, any mucky jokes, and please don't, and that's the way we went along. Mary was paid the princely sum of five pounds a week. And with the boys, she played the dance halls and the swanky West End restaurants, rubbing shoulders with society's smart set. It was nice people, people who had a, what we would say, roughly, a bob or two. And the, the ladies were nicely, nicely dressed. We used to sit in the bandstand and the boys would pick out who were the nicest looking glasses and all that, who had the nicest legs and all that. But all that kind of fun. But oh, I used to, I used to, Oh, I'd die to get down and dance with them. I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to. I first fell into ballroom almost by accident. If it hadn't been for an ex-girlfriend who invited me along, I might never have stepped into a world which has captivated me for the best part of 50 years. When I first put on my dancing shoes, ballroom was still popular, but the peak had passed. It seemed good to me then, so the golden age must have been brilliant. There was something innocent and warm about ballroom dancing, that sense of belonging that it gave you, uh, as well as a degree of self-expression. It's a loss of something more than just ballroom dancing. They're packed onto the floor because they've all got a common interest. They all want to listen to the music, they all want to dance with the best looking girl in the room. But the very heart of dancing years ago was to go out and meet people. It was lovely. It was lovely. You're hearing good music. With a wee bit of luck, you got a wee cuddle and a kiss on the way home. You know, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> 